Um, well, thank you so much for uh, inviting Floating University, which I represent now, and for introducing me. But I also need to make sure that people understand I'm not on the board of the university. I'm on the board of the Association of the Floating. Um, because, spoiler attack, it's not um, floating and it's not a university. But I will let you uh, know more about the project. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with it, it's um, it's an actual place in, in Berlin in a water rainwater retention basin in Tempelhof. Um, you can see it here on this map and it's um, recalled, uh, like collecting the water from the Tempelhof airfield and one big street that uh, joins it. And um, here also a closer look how it um, looked like at least in 2018 because the image is not that actual but um, you can see um, on the southern um, uh, part, the fact that water, the rainwater is collected there and comes into this retention pond and flows out on the northern to the Lamba Canal, so the water uh, in Berlin. And um, you can also see from here that the, the space is, um, of course, inhabiting a lot of different species. You see these greens. Algae that were very present in 2018, um, the reed beds through which the water flows before going out. But you can also notice that on the side, um, the entire pond um, being a retention pond and not an infiltration pond is uh, paved with concrete flooring. So it is a quite artificial landscapes, landscape that um, collect the polluted water, um, polluted rainwater of Berlin. On the outskirts, you can also probably discern uh, some small uh, community allotment gardens that are closest neighbors and um, also decisive um, actors in our relationship to the city. Um, exactly. And then um, important to know about this site is that it, um, it was paved in the 1930s uh, by the US uh, Army, and since then it has remain uh, close to the public as a city infrastructure. Um, and in 2018, the city of Berlin uh, wanted to uh, relocate the retention pond in order to, well, um, have this very prominent space in the city as a valuable um, real estate asset, I'd say. But um, in 2014, the Tempelhof referendum where the people of Berlin voted against the construction of the Temple of Airfield um, also protected this area that is attended to it. Um, and therefore it remained uh, the place that it was um, until 2018 when um, the Berlin Collective Raumlabor uh, decided or started negotiation with the tenants, a company that administrates both the building of the Temple of, Air, Temple of Airfield and this uh, retention pond that, called, that is called Temple of Gambia, which is an important actor to remember for the, the end of this uh, presentation. And what you, what you can see now is the way the architecture looked like in 2018. So it has all, like most of it has now been removed and it looks very different today. But um, I wanted to show you also the way the look the space evolved over the year because it's also very linked to the way we interact with the ecosystem of the place. And um, although I also wanted to focus now on our relationship with the ecosystem, um, it's very difficult to separate it from the program that has been happening there since three years now. For we consider ourselves and uh, understand our practice here as um, intertwined with a nature culture site, which is very yeah, which we inhabit as much now as any other species. And um, this is uh, the program that happened there in the first summer. So it was uh, initiated by Raumlabo and it was a full on open summer where the place was for the first time open to the public and focus were set um, on experimenting, on learning processes, uh, on urban practices, as well as on water filtration. Um, so we wanted to interact with the, with the water that is uh, collected in the basin and not only um, be a parasite to the site. So we 
wanted to interact with it and um, design this water filtration system, which uh, collected the rainwater and threw out different um, um, filters that were, for example, uh, um, bathtubs that were hanging within the structure so that was already integrated in the design uh, with plants or with sand. We also had active carbon, um, mushrooms. Um, well, all of this uh, to, to filter the heavy pollutants that, that are present in the water of the basin. And finally, we also worked with um, Scientific in Berlin, uh, built this moving bed reactor with bacteria that also treat the water in a way. Um, and finally, uh, this was also very performative. So it was a, also a way to engage a discussion with visitors and people interested in the topic. And we um, also got the chance to get the water tested and realized that our goal were not reached as we could not, uh, obviously not properly uh, drink the water or not even for most of it uh, bathe, bath in it. But um, still, we saw a lot of improvements, and uh, this all we could take into account for the for the years to come, in order to improve these systems. Um, exactly. But the most important and uh, interesting uh, fact about this water testing that we did after the first summer was that the water, uh, all the effort we made into treating the water, were very small in comparison with the active filtration of the reed bed. Um, that uh, the water has to go through before exiting the pond. So knowing this, um, after the first year, there was a big uh, shuffle within, like a reshuffle of, of actors within the project and the team and the artists of the first summer uh, decided to come together as an association, um, which since then is still happening. It's still a process. It's, it's quite uh, long, probably some of you know, um, and also very, very interested, interesting. And um, we've still been inhabiting the place now since 2018, but important to know about the Flouting University is that um, it really fo follows a, a yearly cycle where we kind of expand in the summer and, and retreat during the winter. So the, the structures are inbuilt or um, the place goes to kind of a hibernation states but uh, it's still very beautiful so i thought i will also share this with you um, until 2019 where as you can see now the structures are much much smaller and which were which hosted the first edition of um, the climate care festival uh, curated by two members of the association where we decided to put where, where the basin the space of the basin was seen very much as a place where, where it is possible for us um, humans to grasp a bit the, the changes that are occurring in the world and the climatic, uh, climate emergency um, and focused on many topics. Some of them have been uh, already presented today as such as um, a relationship to the env environment, us as caretakers, um, experiments with material, but also environment and personhood. So, all of this topic being um, presented and discussed um, in 2019. Um, and then 2020 uh, was much more quiet in terms of public program, obviously, um, but it was also the occasion for the association to um, get together and collect knowledge, like day-to-day um, -day knowledge uh, about the place and also wishes how the place should expand in the upcoming years. Um, so we decided within the association to have this participation-based design process, um, gathering uh, wishes and, and discussing with the members that are, some of them are artists, but we also have biologists, soil experts, uh, architect designers. And one very important uh, outcome of this that was uh, what you can maybe see now on the screen, that one of the most important things to include in the planning is the dynamic of the surrounding ecosystem. These dynamics will not only continue, but accelerate the ecosystem of the basin, which today is comparable to a lake ecosystem, is about to race to a new state, 
because the mud has extended and is ready to be colonized by the reed, the willows. And it is this moment where we realized that we were not only observing um, the ecosystem year after year, but like we could really see it growing and expanding and expanding around us. So around the structure that we built um, and we're not only uh, visitors, but really actors of the site also in this way. And after that, it was important to understand that everything we built had to be carefully arranged so not to take away too much space from the natural growth and what you can see here is um, the master plan or the way we decided then to arrange the space with um, uh, taking into account that some part of the basin remain very dry and are only momentarily flooded whereas others have constant flow of water um, and we decided to build either in one, in one or the other like remaining into the what we call open water where the the sediments do not settle and we would not take away mud or places for plants to grow uh, or the dry area which anyway is less uh, hospitable um, in the end we went for the dry area and that's where we decided to um, keep on building um, for the summer uh, what you can see the white building here maybe you can see my my mouse um, is where I'm sitting right now. And this is standing since 2018, it has moved. And um, exactly, now this is how it looks today. That's the floating university in 2021. Um, as you can see, us being outside of the water, um, we also uh, could host this year again, the second edition of the Climate Care Festival which is which this time focused on the concept and notion of rewilding in its many definition, uh, not uh, like trying to show so the diversity of approach to this topic. Um, and which for us is very important because um, we also learned uh, a year ago that the owner of the site, Temple of Gambia, has big, big plans for the pond. Um, they tolerate our presence for now, but they want to um, renaturalize the basin, not being very clear what that means and that uh, what it would mean for the site. But what we think is that they want to transform this retention pond into an infiltration pond. So having the water sinks into the ground rather than flow into the uh, canal, which is understandable, but um, also uh, since we learned that they have to pay a lot of money to get the water into the canal because the water is not filtrat filtrated. Um, nevertheless, having the polluted water sink directly into the ground sounds quite um, disturbing when you know that the groundwater in Berlin in this uh, area is very close to the surface. So if it would require a lot of uh, filtration uh, systems, uh, layers of sands or, or carbon, which is also cost uh, demanding. So we are quite uh, skeptical about it. Um, and we decided to, to have this also festival about rewilding in order to start a discussion with, with them um, and see where, what is our place in this, uh, in this process, how to, how to start the discussion. Um, our main argument, um, the, their main argument being that we are in the way of the, of the infrastructure and um, the argument of the um, local environment. Uh, are also taking place away from nature in a sense, but uh, our expertise of the place also being that by including the material that you can find on site, for example, the reeds into the construction, um, um, the mud, it uh, showed also along the years that the, um, the natural growth of the basin adapts around our structures and that they are even uh, um, supporting the growth of, of the ecosystem. For example, you can see here um, that willows have been, take, have been taking roots 
around the structure where the muds accumulate uh, faster. And therefore the ecosystem, as we say, is transforming from this lake ecosystem to maybe a humid uh, forest or uh, um, a grassland. And this ecosystem change being, of course, uh, very high in biodiversity and very active in dynamic systems. So that was it. It was a, a very uh, short jump into the floating university and where we are at the moment. It's all very moving and it's also almost over since uh, uh, September, October, autumn, fall is coming and we will in build soon the structures that are here. So I invite you all, if you can, to come to Berlin and um, see it by yourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jeanne, for this uh, inspiring presentation. Thank you.